Hey, my name is Forrest, welcome back. Let's make a Docker container together. Let's just run one from Docker Hub, the base Ubuntu image. And there it created a container. Let's see if it's running. Sure enough. You wanna see me do it again? This time, let's run our custom image for our application, which as you can see is now running on localhost 8080. This is our custom application running on these two containers, a database container and our app server container, creating our front end and our back end. Easy stuff. We're going to talk about all of this today. We'll go over why devs use Docker, what it is and what it does. Of course, Docker Compose and how Docker fits in modern development in various different ways, including a handful of new Docker tools. With that portion of today's video being sponsored by Docker Scout and Docker Build Cloud. So by Docker, but those two specific tools. Let's start with why devs use Docker. Well, I'm sure you've heard it before. It's because it containerizes your entire development environment. But what does that mean? Well, think of containers like perfectly packaged applications. Everything your code needs to run, the runtime, the dependencies, the configuration, it's all bundled together in a reproducible way. That means when you're sharing a project, you're not just sharing the code because that would require, if you're sharing it with me, me to install Java and all that that entails and various dependencies and so on and so forth. You are sharing the code, but you're also sharing the environment it runs in. This used to be done via virtual machines or VMs. They create entire virtual computers, uh, including the hardware and the operating system. Docker does things differently though. Instead of virtualizing everything, it only virtualizes the operating system. Just that layer, no hardware requirements and things of that nature. It makes it less bulky and it makes it faster. This means all Docker containers share the same OS kernel, which is why they're so much lighter and faster than VMs. And that's really the main takeaway here, lighter and faster. I mean, that's kind of what we want, right? Now let's take a look at this example app we'll use to really understand Docker. It's from the official Docker samples, github.com slash Docker samples. And you don't really need to worry too much about the specifics. What's important is that it's got a pretty common setup. It has React for the front end, Java for the back end, and a database and Nginx and a payment gateway. You've probably worked with something similar before. If not, well, pretend it's some sort of Node.js with Redis and Redis and PostgreSQL database or whatever lane you're in, pretend it's that. And just to note, I'm going to be creating my own fork of this or my own repository of this because it was archived in 2021 and hasn't been updated in actually six years. So I had to make a few changes to the Docker file and Docker compose files. I'm also, and I'm also going to be removing the dev file here and the dev file here just to simplify things. So if you want to follow along or use this example for yourself, use the one on my GitHub account. I'll link it down below, not the one on the Docker samples github i'm just going to clone this here and then look at the app itself ls and you can see how it's structured so we have a docker compose right here we have docker compose dev for well dev stuff but within app there should be a docker file as you can see right here and this is that docker file this you can think of as instructions for setting up your dev environment and what we have here is what is called a multi-stage build and very specifically a three-stage build process to create our complete application the first stage handles the front end the second stage handles the back end compilation and all that and then the final stage brings it all together so if we want to run through this this we're utilizing node.js to build our react front end and you can kind of see what's going on here in pm install and pm run build then in the second stage we use maven to build our java backend and when i say we again this is a sample i didn't create it but i'm going to say we as if i did but just to be very clear, I didn't. So we were very smart about this. <laughs> okay, okay, any of these seven contributors right here, they were smart about it because what they're doing here is copying the XML file and then running to resolve dependencies first and then copying the rest of the project and building that, which is the actual application. And then in this third stage, we set up our runtime environment with a very lightweight image of Java Alpine. This is adding a user, non root by the way. This is copying the front end build, and this is copying the back end build, and this is running the back end build. And because we're using a multi stage build in the way it's structured front end, back end, bringing it all together, it keeps our final image, what it creates, nice and slim since it only contains what we need to run the actual application. Because again, it is just copying what we need from up here. Anyway, I just want to drill that into your heads because this is 
where it begins. This creates the image. You can think of the Docker file as the recipe, right? You have a recipe to make a meal, but the image is the actual meal. And an image is just a snapshot of everything we need to run our app. However, isn't Alpine deprecated? So we need to do open JDK, 8 JDK Alpine, just to ensure it works. So docker build dash T at C dash shop period. The period tells Docker to look for the Docker file in this directory, enter. And as you can see, it does take it a bit of time to build. At the end, we're gonna be talking about Docker Build Cloud, which will drastically decrease the amount of time it takes to build. And as you can see, that command is running through our recipe. You see run add user, you see run npm install, run maven, copy the XML file, and so on and so forth. So 132 seconds, so that's two minutes and 12 seconds it took to build our image. Keep that in mind, because later in this video, we're going to run build cloud, and we're gonna see just how much faster it is. Timestamps are below, by the way, so you can jump to it now if you want. Just make sure you come back, because we're not done. Image is not the final part of this, but you can see how Docker read our Docker file and ran it step by step to build our image. And after all of this was done, what we can do is run Docker images, and now we have an image that'll run anywhere, your machine, my machine, in the cloud, wherever. Sorry, I hit the mic, that happens from time to time. I gotta figure out a new setup, but wherever. And as you can see, Etsy shop latest image ID created three minutes ago and size is 300 megabytes. Now what we do with our images is we use them to create our container. So Dockerfile creates the image, which creates the container. Now let's bring our image to life, if you will, with docker run dash p, 80 80 colon 80 80 at C shop since that is of course the name of the image because we could have multiple images in here we want to specify which one we want to run and what this part right here dash p 80 80 colon 80 80 is saying it's it's just telling docker hey when somebody hits port 8080 on the machine direct them send the traffic to 8080 in the container and here we go firewall yes it's okay it's okay and as you can see, it is running Spring Boot, which is what we're using with Java, Java Spring. But as you can see, it's not running. We're facing an issue because it's trying to connect to a PostgreSQL database called Database. But we haven't set up the database container just yet to link it with our application. And we would actually create the database container just like we created the app container. We use this Docker file to create an image and then the image to create a container. Well, this database directory also has its own Docker file so that we can use this Docker file to create the database image to create the database container. Because like in this app or in the real world, you'll often find you have multiple services that need to run together. This is where Docker Compose comes in, which you previously saw in our project's home directory right here. The thing is, without having the Docker Compose, what we would have to do is with the database image that we created, we would have to run it to create the database container, and then we'd have to create the app container, and then somehow we'd have to make them talk to each other instead of the right networking and all of that, it, it, it can get a bit messy. However, instead of running each container separately and trying to wire them up manually, thanks to Docker Compose, as we see right here, we can do all of this in one file. Check this out. So we have our services. Our services have our database here, we have our app server here, and then, well, technically, what we used to have was our reverse proxy, our database, our app server, our payment gateway, but I am I had to redo it all and I wanted to just make it very simple and make it our dev environment. We won't use reverse proxy or payment gateway in dev anyway. So we're just running with database and app server. These are running their own containers and Docker Compose is tying them together. Or I should say that more technically. It handles setting up a network for them to communicate. The container startup order. As you can see, the database needs to start up before the app server, like I just said, and then manages them as a group. That's actually what this depends on is saying right here. It says, hey, make sure the database is running before starting the app. Pretty cool. So now instead of you know running each container one by one and going from there, all we have to do, and I'm just gonna hop back in here because it's shorter and you can see it a little bit better. All I'm gonna do is Docker compose up. That's it. 
Just watch how Docker orchestrates everything with our Docker Compose. It starts the database, waits for it to be ready, then fires up our app, and all the networking between containers is handled automatically. And it has started Etsy app in 11.885 seconds jvm running for 12.628 and just like that our etsy shop is running on localhost 8080 i know you can't see that up there it's marked off but that's where it's running which you already knew because of this earlier i had docker run and then the port tag mapping our 8080 on our machine to our 8080 in our container and that's being done right here within our app server yeah you can't really see that there we go oh crap we're still using dockerfile.dev luckily they're the same the docker file and docker file dev but let me just change that now this is really cool it is super nice to use the only thing is that building containers can be slow especially with big applications and i showed you how long it took to build our container earlier because we have java compilation and npm installs and it could take a while let's actually let's actually rerun it i'm also going to clear the cache remove all dangling build cache are you sure you want to continue yes that's a lot 3.766 gigabytes everything is clear so what i'm going to do now is compare the build times of the app docker file without build cloud right now and then with build cloud so time docker build period let's do it and while it's building we're already about 70 seconds in i do want to mention one thing in order to have docker working i am in wsl ubuntu as you can see down here i had to install docker desktop on windows enable wsl so that it can work and then once i log out of my computer and then back in and i made made sure i am logged into docker desktop as well then and only then will i be able to go do docker build like i did before that's the way you get docker within wsl2 and if you're using windows you need to be using wsl2 for sure Whew, okay two minutes and 32 and a half seconds 152.2 seconds that's two minutes 32 two minutes 32 yeah wow all right so i'm going to keep that there i'm going to create another terminal just so we don't forget and you're able to enable build cloud within docker desktop obviously it's built in but you can also do it within the cli first i need to create a cloud builder token and i'm going to do that here at build.docker.com and i'm going to scroll down and create a cloud builder i know you can't really see that i'm in the way we're going to call this cloud builder very unique i know and well that's easy so i'm just going to copy this command right here which is docker build x create dash dash driver cloud farce night slash cloud builder enter and there we go so that's adding the cloud builder using the cli with the docker build x create command and then here well i got a little distracted yesterday um putting in my new driveway 600 feet of driveway so it took me a little while. This is just staking it out too, not actually putting it in. So it's the next day, wearing different clothes, just wanted to, to tell you why, and here we go. Now it's time to start using your new builder. If you already have a project with a Docker file, we do, navigate to the project's directory and run this. And I actually don't need to clear it out like I did before. I would actually do something like this in the event that I had already built with cloud because it's it's not stored locally. What I cleared out before and what I just built over here is all stored locally, whereas this uh, obviously is stored in the cloud. So I just need to make sure I'm all clear here. I am because I haven't built it yet with cloud that is. So now I'm going to build it with cloud here. While that's building just to clarify this is two minutes and 32 seconds long of a build so this just needs to come in under that and it's faster and there we have it 65 seconds on the dot 24 out of 24 however whereas over here was 27 out of 27 the few differences are that build cloud will combine some steps like the auth steps with the metadata loading but we also have somewhere in here right here an extra step where we're connecting to cloud so that does add one step the only the other difference is that we don't have an export on build cloud but we do have an export here which it looks like it only has you know about mm, five or six seconds worth i guess what i should have done is ran this command with uh, a, a push or a load flag and the reason why it's faster is because docker build cloud pushed all of that stuff up to well 
cloud servers that are more powerful than your local machine. And I have a powerful local machine, but it reduced the time with build cloud by over half 65 seconds with build cloud 152 seconds without and then I would use this command to set your new cloud builder as default on your local machine and finish. Okay, wonderful. So that's Docker build cloud. It also doesn't just speed things up. It also does all of this stuff, parallel builds, cloud builders, which is like the thing and then shared cache, which that's the cool thing is that if you build it, everything is cached. So then when I go and build it, I can just use the cache. And if you want to learn more about it, do some research, see if it's good for you and your projects or your team, I'll leave a link in the description below. And then there's Docker Scout, security superpowers for fearless, fearless innovators. That is quite the tagline. Let's just read this. Designed to identify security issues, outdated packages, and potential compliance problems within container images, Docker Scout surfaces dependency vulnerabilities so you're protected. That is a beautiful description. That really tells us everything we need to know. So I'm going to run Docker Scout Quick View, which as you can see in all of the sub commands, Quick View is quick overview of an image, but you can do a lot of other specific things. And we're going to do at C underscore app. I think that's what our image is called. Oh, I do need to install a little update from 115.0 to 115.1. Do you also think it's stupid when they get all the way to nine, then they do one zero? and think that's 10, but it's not. It's literally just this again, but with a zero on the end, which you can remove because it's the same number. Okay, so image stored for indexing, index 195 packages, provenance obtained from attestation. It says, what's next? View vulnerabilities with Docker Scout CVES at C app. So let's do that. Ooh, we have something, uh-oh. Improper neutralization of special elements and output used by a downstream component. Allocation of resources without limits or throttling. Authorization bypass through user controlled key. Oh my goodness. Look how much stuff there is. Get, 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 get out of my way. 317 vulnerabilities found in 44 packages. Critical 50 high. Okay. I'm going to run this in order to view base image update recommendations. Let me make myself disappear real quick. Docker Scout recommendations at C app latest. Oh, we're done. Okay. So this image version is up to date. There are no tag recommendations at this time. Yeah, that's because this is deprecated and we just kind of have an open JDK eight of Alpine, even though it was pushed five years ago. And we have all of these vulnerabilities. In theory, if we're using an actual like image that is an Alpine, that is something else that is actually maintained, and we were five years ago, but yet it's been maintained over the past five years, then it would say, oh, this, this image version is not up to date because there are, well, new, newer versions. So that's how that would work. So in other words, I should definitely be using a, a more up-to-date and more secure base image than Java Alpine because this, again, is not maintained, but here we go. So if Docker, Docker Compose, Docker Build Cloud, Docker Scout, whatever, can help you and your anywhere in your software development lifecycle with security build times, containerization in general. Well, I'll leave a bunch of links for you to be able to learn more in the description below. I hope this helped. If you're a newer developer, I highly recommend learning at least base Docker, understanding Docker files into images, into containers and containerization because it's a very valuable skill to have. Or should I say another tool in your tool belt? And then you can also check out the entire suite of tools that Docker offers alongside it. Anyway, this was a fun one. Uh, next, we'll see how my Rust journey has been going because that is the next video and it's what I got to get back to right now, coding in some Rust. All right, I'll see you on the next one.